Hey you! Yeah, you there. I see you with your fancy tech job in the innovation hub of the city, nestled amongst experiential retail establishments and bespoke coffee shops. You embody the live-work-play lifestyle of the enlightened urban city dweller. And you're here in this moment thinking to yourself, I want a motorcycle that aligns with my core values of compassionate capitalism and will also look good on my Instagram feed parked in front of a plant wall with a neon sign that reads, it's a vibe. And while I cannot recommend any motorcycles that run on full moon charged crystals, boba tea, or performative wokeness, I can recommend some motorcycles that will be otherwise great in an urban setting. These bikes will be comfortable enough to ride while wearing a man romper, nimble enough to evade lingering COVID patios and rapidly erecting mixed use property developments and powerful enough to get you outside of the city on the weekends to rip some twisties and remind you what it actually feels like to be a human being. So without further ado, let's talk about the top 10 urban motorcycles. This video is proudly sponsored by our friends over at Rockform. I'll tell you more about them later in the video. Let's get into it. A motorcycle suited for an urban environment will typically be smaller in displacement, but that doesn't mean you'll be limited to outright beginner bikes like the MT-03 or the Z400. Mostly you'll want to avoid high revving motorcycles that will never even have the opportunity to get you out of first gear on city streets. That just kind of sucks. Honda has a new bike in their lineup that is catered right towards the Urban Explorer, their new SCL 500. At the heart of this bike is the same 471cc parallel twin Honda has used in the Rebel 500 and the CBR 500R. This bike seems to be clearly aimed at the Royal Enfield market, relying on classic retro styling and a highly accessible price point, utilizing parts from the parts bin of other motorcycles. But unlike the Enfields, this liquid-cooled parallel twin is quite a bit more efficient at getting the rider up to speed. The SCL 500 is making power right on par with the Rebel, coming in at 46 horsepower and 32 foot-pounds of torque. The SCL 500 is very much distilled down from the Rebel, but has some changes in features that make it worthy of its own place in Honda's lineup. While this bike shares the same frame, it has a taller subframe which makes it sit more like an upright scrambler and less like a squatted bobber style cruiser. The SCL also has one larger tooth rear sprocket for easier acceleration as well as longer suspension travel, most notably in the rear, having increased from 3.7 to 5.7 inches from the Rebel to the SCL. It has a 19 inch front tire and a 17 inch the rear, which again contribute to the scramble look and functionality. Which if you don't know, that setup is really nice for urban commuting with potholes and jumping curbs and all sorts of stuff. Really, really nice. The SCL 500 manages to retain the approachability of Honda's middleweight bikes as well with a 31 inch seat height and a 420 pound curb weight. This motorcycle has an MSRP of 6800 bucks which is honestly the bargain bin for Honda. They always seem to demand a bit more of a premium price than their competitors. Another new bike from Honda that would be a great option for an urban commuter is the CB500X. I recently talked about this bike in one of my beginner bike lists and I placed it number two and a lot of people were surprised by that decision but let me explain. This might not be a motorcycle for the overly fast fashion conscious city dweller as this flavor of sport touring dirt all motorcycles never turn heads quite the way a flashy retro scrambler does, but it is still operating within ideal parameters for an approachable, comfortable, and affordable urban bike. And thanks to its design, it could serve as a little weekend getaway rig too. This bike is using the 471cc liquid cooled twin we just talked about, makes the same power as other bikes as well in the category, 46 horses and 32 torgos. This bike has a standard riding position for comfortable commuting around town. Similar to the SCL 500, this bike also has a 1917 inch tire setup and longer suspension travel. Though it does sit a little bit taller at 33 inches and weighs 440 pounds, it might not be worthy of transcontinental touring, but if you ask any GS rider, you know that they mostly end up at the coffee shop anyways. And if you're going to keep your sport touring pseudo adventure style motorcycle mostly restricted to the concrete jungle anyways, you might as well do it on a little Honda that costs just 7300 bucks instead of a BMW that's going to run you $20,000. The CB CB500X can also be equipped with some pretty sweet luggage, making it a pretty awesome little bop around commuter bike. Now look, riding in the city can be difficult. Crazy distracted drivers, obstacle construction sites, you name it. And while it is a lot easier to have a lightweight and easy to control bike for these circumstances, it is also beneficial to be able to use your phone for GPS directions. Anytime you go into the city, there is some sort of event happening, some car accident or some unforeseen road closure. And having your phone conveniently mounted on your motorcycle, you'll be able to safely get to where you need to go with the 
keys. That's why we love working with Rockform. I use a Rockform phone case and mount on my motorcycles because you know that the brand I trust to keep my phone safe. It's a jungle out there after all, you never know what could happen. Their cases are drop tested and seamlessly integrate with the handlebar mounts they have available for any type of motorcycle. Their cases are also magnetic which makes it great for mounting onto your toolbox when you've got your bike in the garage. Rockform has been so good to us here at Yami Noob, so if you want to support the channel, do yourself a favor, get a Rockform case and mount for your bike. And if you use the code YN25 at rockform.com, you'll receive 25% off of your order. Again, that is rockform.com with code YN25 for checkout for 25% off. Thanks so much for the support. Now back to the video. Now look, you can't talk about urban commuters without mentioning Royal Enfield. That's just a fact. I mentioned Royal Enfield in the first segment that wasn't even about Royal Enfield. It just comes with the territory. These bikes are built to be grunty, no fuss bikes that will get you anywhere you need to go. You probably won't get there very quickly, but you will get there. Any Royal Enfield will be good for urban riding, but I feel like the Scram 411 gets the highlight today. The infrastructure of the modern American city seems to swing between massive amounts of development and then crumbling disrepair, so a scrambler can give you the confidence to trundle over the decaying wreckages of renowned historical landmarks as the cruel hand of big real estate makes room for more CrossFit gyms and short-term rental properties. The Scram 411 has checked every box for Royal Enfield's vintage scrambler. Wide flat handlebar, relatively flat seat, sculpted tank, spoked wheel, skid plate, you name it. Powering this bike is an air-cooled 411cc thumper that makes 24 horses and 24 foot-pounds of torque. It is limited to a 5-speed gearbox as well, so don't expect to tear up any interstate freeways, but the Scram will have you puttering around town without too much issue. It's not to say it can't go on the highway, it definitely can, it's just not going to be the best bike for it. It can also serve as a weekend toy for some light off-roading scrambling or campsite mule. The Royal Enfield Scram 411 costs just $5,100, which is incredibly affordable, especially if you spent an exorbitant amount of money to rent a 500 square foot downtown apartment. Speaking of prohibitively expensive, the next motorcycle on our list is the Harley-Davidson Nightster. Harley-Davidson seems to be slowly inching towards offering motorcycles that are competitive both in price and features. The Nightster is a cool cool little modern cruiser with the price point being the main thing working against it, but still worthy of consideration as an urban motorcycle because they're edgy, cool cruisers aimed for younger riders with lots of money. And where will you find people with above average incomes who make purchases based on mostly aesthetic choices or brand recognition? City folk. So alas, we have the Nightster. This motorcycle is the sport of spiritual successor to the Evo Sportster, although beyond its silhouette and price point. It luckily has left much of the Sportster in the past. This bike is powered by a 975cc liquid-cooled V-twin RevMax engine. Unlike old tubular frames of Sportster days past, the engine on the RevMax acts as a stressed member of the frame. Whoa, stuff that the Japanese bikes have been doing since the 1990s, Harley is now doing too. It's making this bike much lighter and better handling than older motorcycles from Harley-Davidson that would likely threaten to buck you off if you even dared lean it over on the side of the tire at speed. This bike is making 90 horsepower and 70 foot-pounds of torque, and when you're right in the city, torque is the name of the game. So the Nightster should be right at home in stoplight traffic. This bike has a right side up, show a fork in the front, and LED lighting all around. Both traction control and ABS are included. The Nightster has an MSRP of $13,500. You're also likely to find quite a few supermotos in an urban setting. Supermotos are lightweight, torque forward, and just a whole lot of fun for bopping around town. There are a few bikes that come in supermoto trim from the factory, and even less that are fuel injected. So the supermoto for today's list of urban motorcycles is this KLX 300 SM. This bike is affordable, lightweight, fun, and exudes Kyle energy. Sure, the DRZ will make a bit more power, but it is also limited by a five-speed beer box and a carburetor. And while carbs are fine if you don't mind having to use a choke and stabilizing your gas over winter, the merit of EFI really becomes a matter of practicality. You can get a KLX, get an exhaust and a tuner, and see a decent bump in power as quickly as you plug a power commander into the EC. You. Whereas if you buy a new DRZ, which is a weird move, you're going to have to fuss with rejetting the carb and God forbid the DRZ forums gaslight you into performing the 3x3 airbox mod and then down the rabbit hole you will go. And if you buy a used DRZ, you know it's going to come with emotional baggage. Whereas a KLX is cheap, reliable, and easy to modify. They only make 26 horsepower and 17 foot-pounds of torque from the 292cc single-cooled engine, but granted they only weigh 304 pounds stock with an exhaust and a tune. This bike can be a hoot. 
Plus it has a six speed gearbox. Cowie actually just updated the look of these bikes for 2024 too, which I really enjoy. We've got improved lighting and more subdued color options compared to the aggressive neon of older models. The 2024 KLX 300 SM has an MSRP of 6,600 bucks. For urban motorcycles, you've got to give some credit to Yamaha and the MT-07 for making the quintessential cheap squid missile for the urban degenerate. And for the more mature, sensible, reputable urban rider, there is of course the XSR 700. The XSR 700 is all the same playful, torquey energy as the MT, but it's been given the retro hipster treatment. And I really like this bike. We gave one away in 2020, and I, I really liked it. It was super cool. So this way you can be a closeted squid freelance graphic designer by day and a wheelie popping whip it huffing squid by night. Both of these bikes have the spicy 270 degree parallel twin that makes 74 horsepower and 50 foot pounds of torque. They weigh just about 400 pounds so it won't be too inconvenient for slow speed stuff around town as you embrace the dark side of Japan. There isn't much to say about these bikes. They're ubiquitous with urban motorcycling but it had to be stated nonetheless. If you want to know more about the MT-07 and watched our recent video titled the MT-07 is the bike of the decade. The MT-07 costs $8,200 and the XSR700 costs $8,900. The MT-07 really reshaped what we know about fun motorcycles designed for urban riding and as a result has made way for a whole new invention of the standard Japanese motorcycle. A bike that has been developed that is a direct result of the MT-07's prowess is the Suzuki GSX 8S. Suzuki finally did a new thing and it's not even that new, it's just their own iteration of the 270 degree naked twin bike that we're used to by now, but alas, it's here and it's likely catered towards city riders. It is a 776cc parallel twin making 82 horsepower and 58 foot-pounds of torque. It has the edgy, angular design you'd expect from a naked bike. Despite existing as a derivation of the MT-07, the Jixxis 8S has managed to outperform the MT in quite a few ways. It's outfitted with KYB suspension, dual Nissan front calipers, a tech package that includes ride modes and low RPM assists, and even a quick shifter. The Suzuki Jixxis 8S is priced very competitively as well at $8,849. If you're an urban rider who never truly wants to leave the inner city and has a predilection for Tom Fuller, there's always the Honda Grom. The Honda Grom is kind of the king of mini bikes, having created a whole genre of small bikes for big riders. And while much of the uses we think for Groms are limited to goofing off with other grown men on little bikes, I'm sure some people somewhere actually use them for normal transportation in urban areas. It's approachable for beginners, children, the elderly, and pretty much anyone who can still tie their own shoes should be able to ride a Grom. It has a 124cc engine that makes like 10 horsepower and 8 foot-pounds of torque. The 30-inch seat height makes it large enough for a full-grown adult to comfortably ride it, and the 229-pound curb weight makes it light enough for that same grown adult to be able to jump it over a fountain at your local urban park. These days, the MSRP for a Grom will run you $3,600. The next bike on the list is the Ducati Scrambler. You gotta love the Ducati Scrambler. It's like the least expensive way to get the Ducatis the title that so many Euro boys are after. Like I mentioned prior, Scramblers seem very fitting for the urban landscape, and since Ducati dealerships are always located in larger metropolitan areas, you'd better live in a city to easily drop your bike off for service when the Ducati Gremlins come for you, or if you just need to get a $300 oil change. I am kidding of course, I am a bit of a scrambler simp myself, having owned a Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled as one of my personal motorcycles for over 4 years now. The Scramblers are great, they come in a bunch of different trim options and two different engine displacements, they received an update recently too, with the new models having a large TFT dash, LED lighting, and a quick shifter. The Icon is the most entry-level scrambler model in the newest generations with all the updated tech goodness. It has that same lovable 803cc air-cooled L-twin engine that makes 73 horse and 48 foot-pounds of torque. It is a really nice little engine. This bike has a 31-inch seat height and weighs right around 408 pounds. There are other scrambler models with different options, but you will have to cross-shop those on your own if you want to see everything. The Scrambler Icon is an MSRP of $10,995. And the last bike on today's list of course, is one of my personal favorites, the perennial Husqvarna Svart Pilen Faro Wound. The Svart Pilen has seen a lot of praise on this channel, and that's because it's just a really great all-around package. I kind of tend to believe that I am personally responsible for probably at least 100 Svart Pilen 401 sales, maybe 200. Husqvarna should probably cut me a check. I'm just saying. We, we really simped for that bike. It's a great bike, but truly, we did the Lord's work. 
And for the urban commuter, it pretty much checks just about every box. It's a great, albeit unique looking motorcycle with plenty of curb appeal, has the sci-fi scrambler look that it's familiar yet foreign at the same time. It's really inexpensive to purchase and being owned by KTM, Husky packed this far pillin with as many value driving features as they possibly could. It has a liquid cooled 373cc single making 44 horsepower and 27 foot pounds of torque. It has a semi adjustable WP apex suspension, by Bree brakes, which is a subsidiary of Brembo, dual channel ABS and LED lighting. It's a fun, comfortable bike to ride and it really just looks so cool. You can ride it around town, you can do some light scrambling, you can park it in front of that neon sign and wait for the fog to roll in for a cyberpunk photo shoot. The Svarpillen 401 is a good beginner bike, good urban commuting bike, and just a good bike all around. And it'll cost you right around 5650 bucks. So that brings us to the end of the video today. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. This was a bit of a long one. Which bike do you ride in the city? Turbo Busa? What do you think of this rapid urban development? Is the rent too damn high? Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thanks again to Rock Firm for sponsoring today's video, and we'll catch you in the next one. Fact. The world's oldest customer complaint dating back to 1750 BCE was written on a clay tablet in ancient Mesopotamia, expressing dissatisfaction with the delivery of incorrect copper and poor quality ingots. Goodbye. Keep watching Amy Noob!